Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with another episode of the AC Milan career mode here on Xbox One. We're into episode number 17 and we're coming into this one on the back of a rather good win in the in our last game against Lazio in the Coppa Nazionale. Now we, we were able to run out with a fantastic second half performance. 4-0 winners in that one. So we're hoping to maintain that run of form in uh, the opening game of this episode. As you can see, we've moved up to second in the league now. We're level on points with Napoli, but uh, just one point behind Roma on, uh, on top of the league. So if we could get a win here against Bologna, that would be absolutely crucial in our charge for Champions League football. And Stefano Sarawi tries to finesse shot there. I was aiming for the far top corner. I think it took a deflection off the defender. But it was a great save from the goalkeeper going up to his, uh, to his right to, uh, to tip the ball over the bar. The corner comes in. We're going to go up with Victor Ruiz. And unfortunately, it's going to fly over the top of the bar. And uh, we don't get the chance to take the lead in the opening four minutes or so. But we do get a free kick a couple of minutes later. Kosugi Honda scored a screamer of a free kick against Chelsea earlier on in the season. Unfortunately, this... This time the goalkeeper is able to get across and get his hands to it. And it is a very, very good save in fact. He's at full stretch the goalkeeper here to just get his palms to it to keep it out and keep us out as well. But Bologna were very, very defensive in this game. They came to uh, they came to the San Siro with an absolute game plan. And that was to just catch me on the counter-attack exactly like they did here. And squeeze the ball underneath the goalkeeper to take a 1-0 lead. And then just defend. And I've never, ever known a side defend as stoutly as uh, as Bologna did in this particular fix. So Mario Balotelli is trying to get involved here on the edge of the box. Wonderful Ronaldo chop inside the defender. Gets the shot away, but he just can't quite find the accuracy with it. Just kind of pulls this shot a little bit. Perhaps snatching at it, trying to get it away a little bit quicker than uh, perhaps he needed to. He had a bit more time and space than uh, he may have thought. But he's involved again here. This time he does have time and space. Gets the shot on target. But again, it's another good save from the goalkeeper to keep us out just before half time. We're going to get one more chance before the break came though. Abate's into Honda. Trying to get it onto his left foot which is of course what you want to do with Kozuki Honda and again it's another good save by the goalkeeper to keep us at bay and this is how defensive Bologna were playing they were playing a 3-5-1-1 I said that weird 3-5 they were playing a 3-5-1-1 but uh, the the first of the ones kept dropping back into uh, into midfield so it was effectively a 3-6-1 which was so ridiculous ridiculously hard to play against. You could, as you can see from the stats there, um, we had so much possession, 61% possession, but it was all just sat in front of their back line. I couldn't break through them, and unfortunately, Mario Balotelli goes down in a heap there early on in the second half. We're going to have to bring him off. It's only a bruised shoulder, so he's only going to be out for a matter of eight or nine days or so, thankfully, since we've uh, just made the decision to keep him at the club rather than send him to Chelsea for a ridiculously large amount of money. And uh, it's rather an innocuous fall as well. I can't really see how he would have bruised his shoulder from that. Perhaps he needs to just be a little bit more manly and take the knocks. But uh, regardless of that, we had to take him off and we had to bring on Alexander Lacazette. And he was involved here. Lovely fake shot or fight, fake pass to uh, to get the space and so close to finding the top corner with that. A wonderful strike. And uh, unfortunately, it flew past the, uh, the top of the goal. And we're going to get another chance with him here. The defence really really loose with the possession he's going to smash it from 20 yards hit the bar and I, I where's goal line technology in FIFA man that was so so close we'll have a look at a replay I still cannot decide whether this is over the line or not from some angles like that it looks like it is and then you spin round to this side and it looks like it's there's just like a couple of millimetres of it still over the line. Maybe it's just because the lines at the San Siro are quite thick, quite thick white lines. If they were a little bit thinner between the posts, that might have counted as a goal. But we end up losing the game 1-0, thanks to uh, thanks to just some phenomenal defending from Bologna. They had one shot on target all game, and that was the one that won it. I was really, really disappointed with that particular performance. And unfortunately, we have to come into this game against Fiorentina uh, with uh, a bit of a rotation side. The, uh, some of the players that uh, wouldn't necessarily be involved in a lot of first team games, like Erby Emanuelson starting at left back, etc., um, you know, are having to play in this one. We've got a lot of fixes at the minute, and we dropped to fourth with that uh, defeat against Bologna. We're losing pace with those ahead of us. Of course, there's still a long way to go, so it's, you know, there's not too much to worry about at this particular stage. But uh, this clip is basically going to sum up everything that was happening to me 
in uh, not only this game and the previous game, but this entire episode. You can see there's just players absolutely everywhere throwing themselves in front of the ball. I can't get a decent effort away. We just can't seem to get the ball free enough to uh, to be able to find the space to get you know a, a decent effort on goal to be able to cause the goalkeeper any real problems. They then catch me on the counter-attack here with Joaquin. Breaks down the right-hand side. Admittedly, it's poor defending from me. I shouldn't have stood in there with Emmanuelson. He beat the RB too easily. The ball whips in and Quadrado wins the header. I... Tried to uh, to jump up with the defender, but it took me too long to realise that the auto switch had given me Adil Rami and not the player that was actually underneath the ball. So I was pressing like B to try and clear the ball, and I was just stood there with a player that was nowhere near it, and just kind of staring at the ball, not having any ability to get anywhere, you know, near it to be able to clear it. So unfortunately, uh, I, it's either my fault or the game's fault or both. Probably the game's uh, my fault rather. It's probably me just wanting to blame the game, but. <laughs> Aviati absolutely supermans their man in the face there, Giuseppe Rossi. And the referee gave absolutely nothing. So perhaps that's uh, kind of karma almost going back in my favour. And we were fortunate not to concede a penalty there. But Adam Yates breaks inside beautifully. And I was so disappointed with that finish. He really should have done better there. Firing it all the way across the face of the goal. And unfortunately out the far side for a goal kick. But again, the defence were going to be lax in possession. And it's Lacazette to, uh, to pounce on it yet again. And this time he does find the back of the net in emphatic fashion and get us back on level terms at 1-1. It's a decent finish and I was pleased that uh, he was actually able to get himself on the score seat this time after being so really unlucky and misfortunate in the previous episode. Previous episode, previous game with uh, that ball that came back off the bar into the onto the line. But after scoring well that chance really should have been taken. After, again, more disappointment for a clear goal-scoring opportunity, just not being taken by this rotation side. And it's kind of the main flaw with this squad at the minute. Um, we have a very, very strong first eleven, as we saw from the game against Lazio yesterday. Very, very strong first eleven that can beat anyone on their day. But our rotation squad and the players that we have that aren't necessarily first-team choices every single game, they're not the strongest. And, uh, you know, it's... Players like Anime H, which I bought in not to necessarily be first teamers right now, uh, they are there to be in that rotation squad and are genuinely there to help grow as a team, which is why this entire AC Milan series is not necessarily just about this one main first season. It's more about the long term. It's about the second season and the third season. It's getting the team together now so that we can grow gel together in this first season and then hopefully be as successful as possible next season. Almost like Jose Mourinho saying with uh, Chelsea this year, although of course uh, Chelsea are competing at the top of uh, the Premier League this year. And uh, to be fair, in the, in the Serie A this year, in this season at uh, AC Milan we're competing at the top of the Serie A as well and we're doing well in the cup in the semi-final of the Coppa Nazionale winning 4-0 in the first leg and we're through to the knockout stages of uh, the Champions League so there are a lot of similarities to be drawn there between uh, our, our performance in this AC Milan career mode and kind of the mindset that Jose Mourinho is trying to put across in, uh, you know, with Chelsea in real life but we come close there with uh, Leonardo Minucci almost getting his first goal for the club there rising with that header but the main problem with this game and it seems to be me being just ultimately frustrated with absolutely everything that was going on in this episode. The shadows on the pitch were horrible. My eyes just couldn't cope going from the darkness here, which was fine. And, the you know, the brightness on the far side, which was fine. But that middle period, because we both got dark tops, white shorts and dark socks. I was really, really struggling and I just couldn't create anything. It was just ball going backwards and forwards in midfield. There's only three or four highlights from this entire game against Sampdoria. And the main one, this final one, is where they really should have just taken the lead. He's got so much of the goal there to aim at. He misses it. We take a point from this one. So unfortunately, we take two points from a possible nine from this episode, which really has affected our league standing. We'll have a look at it now to so be able to see. We've dropped to fourth in the table. Everyone around us has a game in hand. We're all Already four points off Juventus at the top, but we're only one point behind Inter in the Champions League spots. So uh, they're still all to play for for the Champions League qualification, but it depends what happens in the next episode or two. Basically what happens for the rest of the week uh, in real time, in real life, the rest of the week, the next two or three episodes. It depends what happens then in, uh, in those videos as to uh, where our domestic season 
in uh, in league form will be headed for the entirety of this first year but that's all for this episode guys please do feel free to leave the video a like if it could be so kind that would be absolutely superb if you missed the previous episode there's an annotation on the screen on the right hand side to take you to it of course feel free to check the channel page as well there will be a my player episode tonight it is tuesday although of course there's a rather large champions league game with chelsea on tonight so i will be watching that and uh, the episode will go up at nine and of course feel free to sit with sub boxes after the champions league football and it will be there waiting for you and of course feel free to subscribe Subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. There's an annotation on screen on the left hand side, a link in the description, and your usual subscribe button. And of course, again, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Chesnoy Gaming. We're pushing 700 followers over there now, so if we could reach that at some point soon, that would be absolutely brilliant. I, uh, I love having uh, all the interaction with you guys on Twitter, so the more of you over there, the better, as far as I'm concerned. But that's going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.